Hey, so college football, man, not a lot going on except it's completely changing. Just uh, some of your, I know. Just tell me your thoughts. Uh, my thoughts are, who knows? Uh, uh, hurry up and wait is another another uh, thought that comes to mind. Um, here's what I said earlier on 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 hot mic with with to withrow on on outkick. You know, um, I don't know why. Okay, I can't tell you why, but I trust Greg Sankey because uh, I I don't know of a better leader right now that's actually willing to step up and do something and do it behind the scenes and actually, albeit. Uh, I, I I get it. The 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 coaches are not going to like this. Many universities are not going to like this. Be patient with the process, and be patient with the process that's going to work out just fine for the SEC. Um, you know, he's got comments about uh, players getting paid and not being taxed. I get all that. Uh, no one wants to be taxed, Greg. That that would be my response. No one wants to be taxed. Uh, he pays taxes. He doesn't want to be taxed. So of course, no one's going to come up to him and say, "Hey, I'd love to be taxed like an employee." Um, I, I don't agree with him there, but I agree with the sentiment of, Hey, that this is just, let's just slow down and get this right. Um, because without that, without that mindset, I don't think anything's going to get done. Uh, and we're just going to continue down this path because everyone's out to benefit themselves instead of the greater good, the greater good being the product of college football. I'm looking at this through the football lens. Um, Nunu, I don't know if you agree, but like, I, they they need more Sankeys and and Petit. Uh, you know, they they need more of the uh, the the power instead of the power to the the power for. They need more juice behind them uh, as an individual commissioner leader. Uh, and right now, it's just Tony Petiti and 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 Greg Sankey, and Sankey's uh, a, a step ahead because everyone's wanting to know what he's going to say what he has said, what he will say to SEC Media Days, all of that factors in. And I, I appreciate the fact he's doing things behind the scenes when, he, when he's saying that, uh, you know, there's he, he he's very good at making everyone feel like he's sitting back and watching when he's actually doing everything that's going to make everyone else react. You know, I think he's an interesting character from an A&M perspective because there's many who still are upset with him, the, the whole Texas fiasco of getting sure. into Oh, no doubt. It. No doubt. But at the end of the day... I think he is doing what's right for college football. No, for the SEC. Like it made sure. too much business sense for them. But what what's good for the SEC is good for college football right now, uh, because of where we are. I'm not I'm not saying where we were uh, five years ago. I'm just saying where we are now, because it, the if you're looking for everyone's trying to position themselves to be a part of the pack, and the pack is being led by the SEC and the Big Ten. So. Uh, you're, you're following the lead there. You're taking less revenue uh, in the college football playoff. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, in, in term, and, and by the way, uh, when it comes to the uh, federal legislation, if we ever get there, and we won't anytime soon, uh, they're going to look to the SEC and Greg Sankey, who's been up there with what feels like 5,000 hearings. I believe there's 12 or 13 of them now. He's been to five of them. So I, I mean, in terms of uh, lobbying, uh, he's been the top lobbyist, even though uh, his name's not mentioned as as much as we have heard from you know the, the different different uh, figureheads that aren't really showing much power or leadership right now, um, Sankey behind the scenes does that, and I appreciate the fact that at least he's trying to do something instead of sit back and just you know let federal uh, government figure things out, which again will take longer than it would for the the power four conferences to agree on something along those same lines i feel like a&m's new athletic director the more i hear him talk and i knew obviously his history but the more i i really like that he is proactive and what he said the other day was expense uh college football's got an expense problem not a revenue problem what do you think about that yeah i mean i look i i agree with the exp- the, the expense problem to me is the buyouts um uh, and not every university's paying the full price for these buyouts uh, but if you look at some of the numbers, no, I mean, think about the, the the percentages of the athletic budget, and about nine percent. This is about two years ago. About nine percent of the athletic budget went to the players, like the overall experience, the 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 the, the uh, student athlete 
fund that it takes. Nine uh, percent went to uh, of the athletic budget went that their direction. Forty two to forty five percent of the budget went to buyouts of coaches, administrators, staff, uh, executive uh, executive roles within the athletic department that were fired, that were paid to leave, paid to fail. That that to me is the biggest issue right now with budgets. It's not going to. It's not paying players. It's not the two point seven billion settlement. It's the fact that in college sports right now, and especially college football, the college coaches, while they don't have it as as uh, it, it's not easy, they don't, they don't have it, um, it. It's tougher than being an NFL coach from just the the grand scheme of everything you have to be on top of, on top of. You know you. Guys, coaches just want to coach, and you can't do that anymore in college football. But what you can do is fail and get paid to fail. Uh, Ryan Day is going to get paid like $45 million to lose to Michigan, not beat Michigan this year. But if he loses to Michigan, he's going to get fired. He'll get paid $45 million to do so. That's ridiculous. But if he took another job, the team hiring him would owe about $6 million to the university. There is a huge discrepancy between the buyouts and the haves and the have-nots in that regard. And it's not just the top coaches, which is hard to find, by the way, that the, the resumes of really true championship level coaches, it's down like, coaches that are winning six or seven games a year and being praised for it and giving raised, uh, getting raises for it. They're also having these crazy buyouts. Uh, th that's the expense that it goes towards. And many times the boosters are paying it, but now the boosters are paying players. So the athletic departments are going to be picking up the, the the funds there if they want guys out, and they want to continue to have the funds coming in from their big uh, donors. And and to do that, you got to keep them happy. Just ask Kentucky basketball, uh, where m more money's coming in now than what was coming in uh, for NIL in regards to the basketball program. I, I I look at this as that that's where they've got to figure out the 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 stopgap of how you quit giving all these major buyouts to guys who aren't that good to begin with and who are set up to get fired. You're hired to get fired in, as a coach. And when you get fired in college football, you get paid an exorbitant amount. You guys would know, but I'm saying this from a grand scheme of things, not just looking at Jimbo and using Jimbo as the lazy example uh, because he's out there in, in a land far from anyone else, but everyone else is still Doing at it. a level that they don't deserve. So... I didn't tell you we were going to talk about this, but it just hit me because I talked about it with Stephen McGee a moment ago. Did you by any chance listen to Chris Del Conte with Paul Feinbaum yesterday? No, I didn't see it. Okay, okay. I, 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 it's the last time I'm going to run it today on the show. I'm going to play you this little one-minute soundbite, yeah. and I want you to Good. react to it, okay? Good. All right, let's see if Nick can get that queued up for us because you got it? All right, let's listen to it. Have you been to the, 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 uh, the Red River Rival yet? I, many, at the beginning of my career, I saw it. It's ridiculous. It's the All greatest right. thing ever. You may talk about the cocktail party, the Iron Bowl. It is nothing Ooh, like, I, I like this, where this is game going. I, I think at the state I, fair. Because you had 300,000 people. I detected people. something there. 300,000 people outside. No, the Iron Bowl is awesome. Don't get me wrong. At night, it's great. Same with the, but, but the cocktail party. But this game, nuts, too. Throw it, you got to throw us a bone there, P-Dub. What's up, buddy? P-Dub. Uh, Joe, the University of Texas is not even an official member yet of the SEC, and he's already throwing shade I on the not. Iron Bowl. Did the not. Iron Bowl. No, and no, the no, cocktail no, no, party. no, 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 no. You'll be fine because we're not Hold even on. allowed to call this it a cocktail year, party. Uh, I'm, I got to jump in there. P Dub. I'm sorry. Like, I, I know I'm making too much of it, but I just found that whole thing, that whole interaction, inebriated and terrible. The, the okay, the 300,000 is a not, it's a mic drop. Okay. Uh, welcome to the, welcome to state fairs. Okay. And in Texas, uh, you, I mean, again, the state fairs, uh, haven't, I haven't attended, haven't been, have not been to the red river shootout. Uh, let me get that right. Uh, instead of the rivalry, uh, but the iron bowl itself, we know what that means for the state of Alabama. And I, I view it from instead of the state to state rivalry, the state rivalry to me is what sets the Iron Bowl apart, where uh, for a year, your entire, I mean, in some cases, family uh, uh, trash talk and, and overall mood. Let, think about Alabama and think about just college football fans. Many of many of us, your entire week is determined on how you're going to feel on the result on Saturday. And, and the result of the Iron Bowl is uh, from uh, across the state all about 
the next year. I I view it that way. But look, the split stadium. Uh, he he brings in um, the the cocktail party, all that. I, I, I it's a it, the visual is incredible. It, it is an awesome rivalry. It's an awesome game. But yeah, give me the Iron Bowl um, uh, of of my options. And that is my SEC homerism coming through, no doubt. And now the SEC gets a part of that. Well, my whole thing is like, you just got invited, bro. Like, can you tell us that maybe later? Like, you, like. Well, hey, good for Oklahoma though. Uh, for you know, you've got Oklahoma and Texas uh, coming in and stirring the pot. That that's great. Um, that you know, you the, the real UT is it Tennessee or is it Texas? Like, uh, I, I love all of that. And uh, in many cases, I mean. For instance, the Vols go on the road to Oklahoma this year. That's going to be that's going to be badass. Like let's just let's just say what this is going to be fun to see Hypel go back there um, and and to see some of the road trips that we're going to see to see uh, you know Texas represent the SEC against Michigan. Uh, that that's that's all legit and all the trash talk. The SEC chance will be happening when the Longhorns visit the Wolverines. And that's where I think that really factors into the whole conference realignment. They, the 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 shootout is now a part of all of that, and the trash talk that has always been when the SEC is now added uh, some more fuel. That's that's great for everybody, and and I don't have to tell anyone at A and M that. Jonathan, great stuff as always, brother. Thanks hey, so much. N- hey, Nuno, even even A and M fans have to be happy that Texas is back on the schedule. Yes and no. There's a yes and no oh, to that. Well, but, but I, I can't yes. wait to beat him. I can't wait to beat him. That's my point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's. Yeah, if, if they're talking trash about a rivalry matchup, let's. Uh, yeah, just beat them. Take care of. Take care of business. Appreciate you as always, brother. Talk to you soon. Yeah, man. Always good to be on with you. We'll see you here in about what six weeks there at uh, SEC Media Days in Dallas. Thanks, let's man. Let's go. Yep.